Hi everyone, um, this will be the tutorial for working through problem 10.34. Um, so let's read through the problem. The lossless line shown operating with lambda equals 100 centimeters. Um, if D1 equals 10 centimeters, D1 being the length of the stub here, D1 equals 10, and D equals 25 centimeters, D being this length over here, D. Um, and the line is matched to the left of the stub, what is ZL? So I guess this should actually say that this is a short circuit stub. So working with the information we have, um, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that um, the line is matched to the left of the stub. And we're going to find the origin here. So if the line is matched, then that means that the normalized input impedance is equal to, oh, not Z0, but rather Z0 over Z0 is equal to 1. And consequently, the input ad, normalized input admittance is also equal to 1. So this input admittance is equal to the input of the the input admittance of the load. So I guess I'll just write that at the distance 25 centimeters plus the contribution of our short circuit stub. And that equals so what we're going to do is first, we're going to find out what this guy is. So starting from our short circuit point, that's roughly over there, or I guess over there, sorry. We're going to move one tenth of a lambda. So uh, D1 is 10 centimeters, a lambda is 100 centimeters. This should be fairly obvious, but um, zero point one. So we're going to move a tenth of a lambda, and so going this from this direction down to somewhere around there. That is the uh, input admittance contribution of our short circuit stub. Reading that out, that is negative J1.37. Great. So now let's simplify this just a little. This equals um, YL 25CM plus minus J 1.37. And so this means that the, oh, let me get rid of this line here. This means that immediately we know um, We know the value of the load admittance at 25 centimeters, uh, J1.37. So we can solve for that. 1 plus J1.37 is equal to YL25CM. And so um, at this distance, we can see that this load here contributes a input admittance of 1.37j. So let's plot that on our Smith chart. Um, that would be somewhere here, plus j1.37. So uh, what's left to do? I guess we can move slowly towards our load to figure out what the input admittance at the load actually is. So we're going to move um, 25 centimeters in terms of wavelengths. That is 25 over 100. That is a quarter of a wavelength. A quarter of a wavelength um, is a half turn around the Smith chart because a full turn would be half a wavelength. So half of half is a um, quarter wavelength. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, instead of actually drawing that, I'm going to just rotate it around this center axis here. And so that gets us somewhere around here. YL at the load at z equals 0 is equal to 
one. Um, oh. Now, the actual value of this doesn't really matter yet because we're actually asked to find the value of the load impedance. So knowing that we are now at this point with our load admittance, well, in order to find impedance, all we have to do is flip it around again. Um, so flipping it around again, we simply end up back here. Back here, we already knew what that value was. It was 1 plus j 1.37. So we can write here that our normalized load impedance is 1 plus j 1.37. And um, this should actually give us a z naught. If I recall from my notes, z naught should be 300 ohm. Then our denormalized load impedance is then 300 times 1 plus j 1.37 ohms. And so First, what we did was we found the contribution using the short circuit stub, and then using the fact that it was matched to the left of the uh, stub, attach stub attachment point, we found the uh, input impedance, input admittance of the uh, load over here. Then we translated it over this way to find um, the input admittance at the load itself, and then rotated it 180 degrees once more to find the impedance, and we result in this. Thank you, everyone.